Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 32 of FTB Revelations. Uh, where today, I'm going to try and improve the blood magic automation that we set up last episode. So last episode, we started playing with Woot, right? Um, and we integrated it with blood magic. We've got a alter tier 3 upgrade in there. However, with Enderman in there, we're not getting a lot of LP for this. We're getting like 11 per kill, which is kind of slow. However, we also have like a really non-upgraded Woot Altar and a non-upgraded Blood Magic Altar. So I'm hoping that the two of them, once upgraded, will do a little bit better. Uh, between episodes, I started working on making some reinforced slates, as you can see there. Uh, and what I'm going to do is basically, uh, we've got 32. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 30. That should be a good start. Uh, let's get you guys and you guys here, and that should get me some runes of sacrifice. Assuming that I have enough smooth stone, which I may not. Hey, you. Give me some cobble. That's not cobble. The one thing about the dank null that I don't love is that it's not easy to reorder items in here. I don't think. Like, it's, it's not easy to, like short of emptying it entirely but even then like it kind of self-orders so not a big deal but also you know it would be cooler if it did there you go get me a bunch of smooth stone would you and this can go away and this stuff can go away and you 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 can go in my backpack well actually no i'm gonna need you in a minute okay cool all right bring this back do that and that hooray 30 of them. Nice. That's a good start. So I'm hoping, uh, in theory, that that will improve some of the LP stuff that we got going on, right? So you to there. And that looks pretty good. You to there. You to there. Does that look cool? And then we should have seven remaining, and that should be placed. Cool. All right, now if we take a look at this guy, you're back up to tier four. And then let's find out uh, once you, remember we have to like fill the internal buffer again. So let's give you a little head start on that internal buffer filling. See how quickly it's gonna fill up that internal buffer with a little tick accelerating? Beautiful. So once you're done filling that buffer, then we'll keep an eye on the woot uh integration stuff and we'll see how much more lp we get per transaction right so 4521 is where we're at 4562 that's better right so that was like 41 that's not bad so if it's 41 it should go to 4603 next if i'm not mistaken 4603 on the next flip over 4603 all right well that's better um, now, the other thing I want to try is I'm suspecting that the number of mobs uh, is playing a role here, right? Now, we probably have a lot of Enderman resources generated as a result of this. Yeah, we do. What's up, dudes? Hello. Enderman souls and everything. That's beautiful. Uh, and we're also getting... Hey, remember when I was wondering how to get these shards? <laughs> we just learned how to get those shards. That's cool. Uh, let's, though, uh, from Woot, get a ender shard i want to try zombies i have to assume that zombies are like the easiest mob uh and i wonder if we're going to get more zombies per kill if we set this up right um so what i'm going to do is is get a zombie doohickey uh once i find a zombie that i'm happy with where are you at zombies Nobody wants to be a zombie today. Everybody just wants to be creepers and skeletons. Look at that. There's not a, there's no zombies. There's one. Found him. Hey, buddy. <coughs> cool. Fully programmed. <laughs> Gonna get yelled at. All right, and then what do we do with this guy again? Uh, it's controller core and factory base. And that's right, Prism and Stygian. So Stygian base, 
prism. Uh, we just need dandelion yellow and green. We have more cactus outside, remember. Okay. So there's that guy. And then dandelion yellow. Really? I'm out of dandelion. I thought I got one. That's right. I got one and then I was really stupid about it. And, 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 and yeah. I remember now. I should do something about that. It's not like you need a ton of dandelions, but every now and then you need them. Pulverize that for me, would you? So we get a little bit more dandelion yellow? Thanks, buddy. Okay. So, um, you get combined with the core die. Okay. Core die. Actually, you were right to be here. Is that my, that's the intern. Where's my yeah hammer? There he is. I'm gonna flop you out for the wind turn because you don't need that no more. Cool. And then that and that, no matching recipe. So what was it? Oh, that goes on there and then it's the, okay, cool. There you go, nice. Okay, cool. So that, will get us a new controller type. So I'm curious of two things, right? This is me learning a little bit of the Woot and uh, Blood Magic integration. One, will there be more mobs with zombies than there are with Endermen? Since Enderman is a tier three and zombie is a tier one, I'm wondering if we're gonna get more mobs out of this thing. So to do this, I just break the factory controller and place the new one. Uh, that's Enderman, hold on. That's zombie, cool. All right, so now what are we getting here? Well, it's still one zombie, but it's, uh, is that less RF a tick or is that the same amount? 320, 500 RF a tick. 320, 500 RF a tick. It was worth an experiment. 320, 520 RF a tick. So I mean, it's not a big difference. Okay, so now the next thing we wanna try is, I think we wanna do math. Right? So let's upgrade mass and rate. Mass upgrade, boop, 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 and rate upgrade. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, so mass should increase the number of mobs that are spawned. And we're gonna try this with both zombies and endermen because the higher tiers increase at different rates, I think. But we're gonna find out. Um, and then rate increases the speed at which they spawn. So like right now it's 320 ticks, but it's gonna be less when we put the rate upgrades in. Right, so let's see what that's all about. So you guys can come out. You guys are all done over here. So let's get mass upgrades first. All right, so you just need fortune for a mass upgrade. Check over here. No. Okay, cool. Uh, tier one upgrade cores. Um, right. So we're gonna need. Uh, we're probably gonna need two of you and two of you and two of you. Is that an accurate statement? It is. Okay. So iron, stygian armor plate. Ba 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 ba. Actually, let's get all our these things too. So our plate die and drop this with some yeah hammer in. Yeah hammer. Let's do 16 because that sounds like a good number. All right, so we're gonna want two diamonds. We're gonna want two golds. And we're gonna want two irons, right? Uh, and then it was redstone glowstone and prismarine which we'll use quartz for cool and then the stygium plate and what was it it is a core die core die core die core die cool all right so stygium plate boop 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 Okay, uh, so now for mass, we need fortune. And for rate, we need power. So let's get all of those. So we're gonna want six books, right? Uh, and then turn those all into book and quill. We're gonna need more feathers. Hey, chickens. Good day, chickens, how are you? 
be a chicken around here somewhere. To do all the farms. All the farms. We need all the farming. Okay. That's enough feathers. Three, four, five, six. Sweet. All right. Then uh, we need our tome ready to go. And for fortune, it's emeralds. And for power, it's flint. Really? Why do I feel like I already did that recently? I don't know. It feels familiar to me. Didn't I already do a power doohickey? I feel like I did. Yeah, but the only one we did was the blood magic upgrade, right? Blood magic crystal upgrade. That's for crystal growth. That's right. That's a different ritual. Life essence altar upgrade. All right, yeah. Fair enough. All right, so to make this happen, right, uh, we're going to want levels 1 is 13, 20, and 27. I may not have actually enough. But we'll see 13 for you so if i want mass first let's do the the fortune one so let's get those emeralds we may not even have enough emeralds to be honest with you right um so that's fortune one at least it's only level five levels for that one Ten levels for that one. And I'm thinking it's power three, right? So that's 18 levels. I can do that. That's not too bad. Okay. So that'll at least get the power ones knocked out for me, right? So that would be the rate upgrades. So this is going to speed up the rate at which it produces mobs. And then mass will increase the number of mobs being produced. So let's see how we are. Twenty levels? How many levels total do I have left? Let's put it that way. Uh, 20. <laughs> Should I do this? I'm going to save my experience, right? Because I suspect what's going to happen here is as I add these upgrades, what I'm going to wind up with is just such a huge amount of RF cost that it's going to be prohibitive to begin with. So I'm going to hold off on doing any more than I've already done, right? Um, which is fine, which is fine. Uh, shouldn't be a big deal. So let's put, uh, let's see, I've got you guys. And didn't I have... Fortune one, there you go, mass upgrade. Let's do that one at least, right? Uh, and that should be cool, right? So let's go out there. Whew. And we're gonna pop mass into here, right? So if I pop a mass upgrade on this dude, this should increase the amount of mob spawning. So now Enderman is two. And Zombie is also two. So I'm gonna stick with Enderman, cause like I'd rather Enderman drops than Zombie drops, right? So that should double the amount of LP I get per operation, right? So right now we're at 6181. When this bumps up, it should be like plus 80 something, right? Wasn't it 41 before? Yeah, that's about 80, 82. That's what I would expect, right? 82 property, nice. And then your RF per tick cost is 640 RF per tick. So that's not a huge bump, right? Now, if I throw rate on there, boop. Now we're at 256 ticks at 900 RF a tick. And just for giggles, boop, boop. 3,500 RF a tick. <whistles> but it does it in 80 ticks, so that's kind of cool. But that is going to drain my power like nobody's business. For reals. Uh, okay, good to know. Now, just to be clear, right? 3.5 thousand RF a tick. 3.4 thousand RF a tick. So hardly a difference, right? Hardly a difference at all. Uh, so that's that's good to know. 
maybe not quite as fast as I would have liked you to, to be filling up. But the other thing we can do, 6755, 6837, like it's going to fill up. It's just not nearly as fast as it would have been with a, with a, with a, with a Cursed Earth mob spawner. Not the end of the world. Also, 3,500 off a ticket is a lot for my current tech level. 900 RF a tick is even what I would consider a little bit high, right? 640, not terrible, but that's probably literally breaking even uh, with the amount of RF that I have. Uh, so what I should do is have a chest down here for upgrades and other things that are going to be used. So what we're going to do is pop it right here, and my upgrades can go in here along with my bonus factory guy. Uh, and then let's pop home and see how things are. Put away some junk I don't need. Bada bing you away are you still over here book no okay cool how's this thing doing so he's at plus 200 ish so with that thing running it's not terrible it's just a lot of rf and when other things are running it's like eh. it, we still have a net gain total but we're gonna totally want more rf now now that said if we threw like maxed out mass and speed upgrades in there, we should probably actually be, be producing a decent amount of LP, right? I would say that's a decent amount uh, that it would produce uh, if we if we maxed it out. Now, how's my soul network doing, by the way? 3182. 3182. What I want to keep an eye on is if it's using LP for this ritual. That's a thing, right? Because the ritual, in theory, should be using LP consistently uh and if it's not then that's kind of a good thing that kind of balances for the fact that we get such a small amount of lp per it 3188 818 31 okay i have to look what was the number again before it is using a little bit of lp uh i don't know how much it's a it's a very small amount though very very small amount okay not too terrible not terrible Eh, if I was to do it again, I would probably do it with a Cursed Earth mob farm. But, you know, like I said, trying new things. So, by the way, I can do seven more runes of sacrifice here. I'm probably going to knock that out. Uh, that should be easy enough. To bump out seven more of those dudes. I'm just going to fill this thing up, like, you know, the manual way real fast. Because it's, it's way faster, obviously, to do this. Also, this is cheaty, though, so, you know. But that's okay. We will uh, get the last seven rooms of sacrifice there and uh, kind of go from there. All right, guys. So I think I'm going to leave the blood magic system going for now. Uh, we've got a decent amount of LP coming in. Not a great amount. I'm not going to lie. I'm not blown away by the amount of LP being produced here. But it's automated and it's running. Uh, and I think once we ramp up Woot, it's going to be reasonable. It's probably not going to still be as good as a, as a Cursed Earth mob farm. And I may wind up just swapping it out for a Cursed Earth mob farm and using the Woot structure for something else later down the line. We'll see. Uh, but for now, I want to take a little break from Blood Magic because we've been working on it a lot this uh, last few episodes. So let's, let's switch back to tech a little bit just because I'm getting, I don't want to say low, but lower on RF, right? Yeah, so my power there ain't so hot, right? So we should probably look at that. But the other thing I want to look at is finally getting around to automating my ore production, uh, etc. So let's see, what do I got over here? I got an ME interface, right, that I can feed items into? Yeah, I like that. So what I'm going to do uh, is the following. Let's set up uh, a quick and dirty thing here to get stuff going for ore processing. All right, just kicked off a bunch of auto processing of stuffs and you can see all my machines coming to life as I request shenanigans. So what I'm gonna want is to set up a quick pulverizer and smelting setup here. Um, I don't think there's a lot I can do to make this like different than the way I normally do it. I mean, you know, uh, I'm thinking that, right? Uh, let's see, so we're gonna want you and we're gonna want some furnaces. Right, so we're going to need some bricks. And we're going to need some clay. We not, uh, I should have clay in here. I'm always like, hey, where's my... Oh, right, I put it... I, I hide it in the place. You do that for me, buddy. Uh, so we're going to want ultimately six of these. Yeah, it should be good. Thermals, furnace. And then you're going to also need six of you guys. 
Ore processing is something that I usually do a little bit sooner than this, but, eh, you know, things happen. Stuff and things happen at times. Uh, so what I'm thinking I'll do is the following. How do we want to do this? I'm thinking what I'm going to do is have furnaces on the bottom and pulverizers on top. Does that sound like a plan? I like that idea. Um, and what's the name of that thermal thing that lets me copy settings? What is it? It's a thing, right? Isn't there a thing from thermal that lets me copy machine settings? By the time I remember what it is and how to use it, I probably could have just programmed the machines myself. Um, use on a block to copy its settings. Here we go, red print, sweet. So what I'm gonna want is, um, let's make you input on top, output everything on bottom, but we also want a red output on, or a yellow output on the back. And I'll talk to you about why in a minute. So, copied, maybe not. What am I missing here? Hold an offhand to automatically when placing, yeah, signal disabled. Okay. Crazy. There you go. Okay. Maybe it's not shift right click. Maybe it has nothing to do with shift right click. Okay. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, so anyway, that's what we want, right? And then for you, we want input on top and output on the bottom. That sound like a good plan? There you go. Shift right click to clear it right click to copy and then once it's copied you can right click going forward to paste got it that's how you use those things i knew i figured it eventually um so then we're probably also going to want some item ducts going on here or let's use uh the conduits that we've got uh and energy conduits right and we should have energy nearby right don't we we should have something by way of energy nearby actually we have a couple interfaces we can work with here so that's kind of nice move you just back here so that we can more easily run some power. Hey. Uh, you. That looks reasonable. All right, now in addition to that, um, we're gonna want probably a couple of things. Uh, we're gonna want item conduits, right? So we're gonna want items to go into the top of the pulverizers. Um, but remember with things like gold, right? When we pulverize gold in the pulverizer, we get some things that you can't smelt. Uh, like for example, cinnabar, right? 10% chance at cinnabar. So gold will clog up the system if we were only uh, transferring stuff to the bottom from everything, right? So to solve that, so that that problem, what we're gonna do is have the yellow output on the back with a filter um, from Ender.io, like a basic item filter, because I don't think there's a lot of these that clog things up, right? And we'll get Cinnabar, and that'll be that, right? So we can say, hey, you uh, on the top guys here, right? you will extract on green always active, but your filter will be cinnabar. So the only thing you're allowed to pull out of the pulverizers from the yellow slot, which is this one, will be cinnabar. Cool. Uh, and then you're the same, extract always active, whitelist cinnabar, cool. Effective speed for items for operation. Oh, that's neat, that's new, isn't that? I don't remember that being there before. Cool. So you are extract always active cinnabar, your extract always active cinnabar, and your extract always active cinnabar. Perfect. Uh, and then what we can do is run this guy straight into here, and you will be not extract, but insert. 
okay? And you will be nothing on the back there, so that you basically just whoop, right across there to that guy. Sweet. All right, so that should handle our Cinnabar issue. And then as we, if we run into anything else that does that, we'll just add them to the whitelist of items that can be extracted. I don't think there's a lot else. I think it's just Cinnabar, really. But, eh, you know, we'll figure it out as time goes by. So that gets power going into these dudes. That gets processing going in. What else should we do to these guys automated? We're going to want... Um, let's see here. Let's keep, uh, let's keep the, the, the structure looking nice. All right, you should probably be in single block mode at this point. Okay, looking pretty solid. Uh, we're going to want items going into the top, right? Uh, and where are those items going to come from is probably a good question. Should we export bus into a chest that's going to be some kind of buffer? That sounds like a cool idea, right? I like that idea. So let's do that, right? So you're going to be boop, boop, boop. And you're all going to be inserts, right? So boop, boop, boop. And then we're going to want some kind of chest. You know, let's just do a crate. Yeah, a small storage crate would probably be ideal for this situation. Um, and then on the up, you're just going to be extract always active. And then we're going to export bus. And we'll probably need at least two export buses. Right? Uh, and I feel like we're going to also want uh, capacity cards in here. Now, do you know how to make the yellow cards? You do not, so you should learn that. Boop, boop. Man, I'm getting low on craftings. Okay. Uh, capacity cards, I think we need four of, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and you know how to make those, right? Cool. Acceleration cards? Eh, I don't know if we're going to need them. Maybe two, just to, just to be cool about stuff. Should be fine. So your job So we're going to want to export bus into this dude, right? Just thinking about how to make this look neat. Uh, we could use a phantom face, right? To kind of keep things looking nice. I think that Kind of like that idea too. I should at some point just teach you how to make phantom faces, how much I'm using them in this series. Right? But if we connected up a phantom face back here, then we could export bus into it, and that would be cool, right? We just do that. Connected is fine. Sweet. And then we should have some channels available down here, right? We're using 8 out of 32 so far. So let's just run some cabling. And our, is my other export bus done here? And you guys, perfect. Okay. So the cable is going to come up here. Right? And then we have an export bus here and here. That seemed like a good, good time. So now we're using 10 out of 8 channels, right? There you go. And that's where we start adding our ores to, right? And we'll add two capacity cards and an acceleration card to each one of these. Perfect. Right, so now you're going to export whatever I tell you to into this crate, and then the crate will start dumping it into uh, the, the pulverizers. Um, and I think what you should probably do is round robin that extract, uh, so that what it will do is it'll make sure that all three pulverizers are kind of always going, right? And self-feed disabled is fine. That seems fine to me. I like that plan. All right, so now let's get the ores that we're going to want to auto-process. So we're going to want copper. Let's make sure some kind of inventory is smart here, right? So copper, magnesium, do you pulverize? If you pulverize, I want to process you. You do. Okay, so magnesium, check. Zinc does not pulverize, okay? Uh, tin, yes. Lead, I'm sure will. Uh, lithium, 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 do you pulverize? You do. Okay, cool. Lithium, the other kind of lead. You have ore dictionary support, right? Uh, fuzzy? 
does fuzzy do or dictionary or does fuzzy fuzzy just does yeah so i don't think fuzzy is going to do or dictionary so let's just do the other kind of lead i think we have enough room for it boron do you do the pulverizing you do okay yellowite i don't think you pulverize oh you do you pulverize into uranium grit well that's cool and then you can turn into refined uranium from industrial craft neat now, can your refined uranium work with nuclear craft uranium, or how does that work? I don't know. I might want to hold off on uranium processing for now. Yeah, let's hold off on yellowite and uranium and decide what we're going to do, right, with that. So uranium we'll hold off on, but the copper from uh, that thorium we'll also hold off on. Nickel, we want to do the other kind of tin. Uh, quartz, you pulverize, right? Yeah, you do. But you pulverize directly into black quartz. So what I should do is do that and then add black quartz uh, to the export list thing, right? Uh, and then aluminum, you pulverize, right? Generally, yes, but you never know. Packs are funny. Other type of uranium, ardite, gold, we definitely want to add. Iron, we definitely want to add. Iridium, we definitely want to add. And that looks pretty cool to me. So let's get you guys whitelisting this stuff real quick. Actually, let's make your back orange because of that. Because of that, we want to make the back orange, right? Definitely. Okay. So what we want to do now is make sure that you all have the filter. And that should be cool. Good deal. All right, let's give this thing a little bit of a whirl. So I'm gonna start with copper. And what that should do is start inserting copper here and then you're gonna round robin it up, All right? And then you guys are gonna process that. Also, I made some kits to help speed this up a little bit. Nice, okay. And uh, the other thing I wanted to do was augments. Yeah, actually, no, I was right the first time. It should be 12. Nice. Perfect. Now we're cooking. Sweet. All right. And then uh, what we want to have here, you know what? Because I've got this all set up already, let's let's make you orange on the back, not bottom, right? Orange on the back, not bottom. And then what you guys can do will be extract always active, so that you extract the ingots out. Good, you're working. Beautiful. Hey, we're processing. Up and running. I have mean to get around to that. <clears throat> uh, let's add the rest of this stuff in here. So nickel made its way in, right? And then you guys can go here, and we've got room for three more, right? And that should be cool. And you're not having any storage issues, right? Actually, you're doing pretty good on storage types. Nice. Nice. All right. And then we should be able to fill this stuff all in. And that looks pretty good, right? Like, that's nice and compact, uh, nice and clean. We're going to dump all our all our ores into here uh, and they'll just eventually be processed right so anytime we go mining right we just drop our ores in they're gonna be processed right and that's pretty cool and then our, our gold which is our side effect here will eventually drop down and pulverize as well not too shabby all right I'm gonna call that wrapping up point for the episode so for now Delta 20 signing off hope you enjoyed the episode We'll come back next time, and we'll see what we're going to work on next. Probably some more tech stuff, because I've been doing a lot of magic lately. All right, guys. Take it easy.